ever since mom's surgery. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Harvest. We're glad everyone is here. It's, it's kind of crazy out there, right? Don't want to watch TV. The news have been kind of crazy. So I got some verses I'd like to share with you, help, hopefully give you some words of encouragement. So um, first of all, we need to be in prayer. We need to be in prayer for our country and everything that goes on even here locally. We need to be praying for that. But we also need to believe who's in control. Yes, ultimately, there, there is a God. He is in control. So um, I'd like to share with uh, Mark 11, um, where Jesus tells us, if we believe that we can move the mountain and throw that into the sea, it'll happen. But we have to believe. It takes, you know, power of God's there, but we ultimately have to believe that. Um, in Acts 5, um, they talk about Peter's shadow. They're hoping just to catch Peter's shadow, because just catching his shadow could heal the sick. It could, um, all the miracles that Jesus is working through there. But those people had to believe that, man, this, my cousin's sick, whoever's sick, just bring him and just to cast his shadow within Peter's shadow, he could be healed. And then also later on in Acts, Acts 19, um, same thing with Paul. Paul, they're hoping just to have a handkerchief or an apron just brush him, and then they were actually taking those items, and they were healing and casting out demons with those items, but those people had to believe, so that's what we have to do. We have to believe God's in control. He's got this, but we also need to be in prayer for our country, so anyway, we got a lot to celebrate, and we got some good encouraging worship songs, so would you please stand, and we'll begin. <clears throat> You hear me when I call, you are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night, it cannot hide the light. Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield. Though troubles linger still, whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of always by my side. My strength is in your day, for you alone can say, you will deliver me, yours is the victory. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind, the God of angel armies is 
is always by my side the one who reigns forever he is a friend of mine the god of angel armies is always by my side Well, again, good morning, Harvest, and welcome. We're glad you're all here. Those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live, thank you for joining us, and we're glad you're with us, worshiping with us as well. Uh, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to give, well, I'm not going to, but there's going to be a few announcements, and I'll bring our call to worship from God's Word, and we'll pray together, and we'll continue with our worship. But regarding announcements, I want to turn it first over to Terrace and then to Nancy. Yeah, just another reminder about our youth group kickoff. So the kickoff is September 10th, which is Friday, starting at 6 o'clock. We're going to have pizza and games here, and then that Sunday will be the first lesson. So again, those lessons will start 6.30 to 7.30 or 8, depending how long they go. But every Sunday evening, we'll be doing the youth group. So that's the kickoff, September 10th. Okay, then we have a ladies' event September 19th, so this is for, for all, of, all of us ladies. We're going to just have a fall kickoff get-together at the church September 19th, 6 o'clock in the evening. It's going to be a salad supper, so if you'll bring a salad, and we'll have drinks and some other things, and uh, we'll talk about some fall ministries and uh, just fellowship with one another. So September 19th, a salad supper at 6 o'clock here at church. All right, Grady, did you want to say anything about men's ministry since we're kicking off all our ministries? Um. Thank you, Grady. All right. Okay. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 92. I'll be reading verses 1 through 8. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night doing this to the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy and what your hands have done. How great are your works, Lord. 
How profound are your thoughts? However, senseless people do not know and fools do not understand that though the wicked spring up like grass and all evildoers flourish, they will be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are forever exalted. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you and come before you very aware of the turmoil that our, I guess, not just our country, but uh, the world is in, uh, we, we find security, Lord, knowing that you are in charge. You're not surprised, and uh, though things seem to be out of place, Lord, you are putting things in place because you have a plan, you have a goal, and Lord, one day you will return and you will rule. But in the meantime, Lord, as we await your return, um, we are disturbed by what we see going on around us. Lord, I know this morning I take comfort uh, knowing that uh, even though bad seems going to worse and it seems like evil people are getting away with things, they may look like it, but in the end, they reap what they sow. So, Lord, we rest this morning in your arms, for that's the only place that we do find our stability and our security. So be with us now as we focus our eyes on you, minister to our hearts, Lord, strengthen, encourage us through your word and through the ministry of your servants. And we pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, would you please stand and we'll continue with our worship set. God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than 
sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Father, we just pray that we would all be encouraged and do the work that you want us to do, God, that we would have those opportunities to pray, to reach out to those, encourage those, but just shine your light, God. I just pray you would just help us to do that um, through all this chaos, God, but we just lean on you. We know you're in control, God, so we just put our faith and trust in that, and I just pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Right at this time is Children's Church, and so we're going to dismiss you guys for Children's Church, so you're free to get up and head out. Maybe somebody there for you to, for Children's Church. All right. 
Harvest Free Church supports two missionaries, you would could say. Uh, we Not too long ago, a few weeks ago, we had Paul and Sarah Hout here, and they're in, in Senegal, uh, down in Africa, serving there. And of course, we as a church body support them and their ministry. The second uh, family that we support in their ministry is Christian and Mia Rainbolt, and they serve with... Uh, crew, and I won't say too much more, but I'll let uh, Christian and his family introduce what their ministry is about. But uh, here's our second missionary that we're supporting as a church, and we're glad they're here. So Christian, come on up. Mia, glad to have you all here. Thanks. Thank you, Pastor Brian, and thank you, Harvest. Um, COVID kind of threw off our plans. We always try to come every other year here, and uh, we were here last in 2019, and then the world changed. So we're happy to be back with you guys. And we have appreciated um, Harvest's monthly prayer support and financial support of our ministry. Um, it means a lot to us. And so we just want to give you guys an update. Got some stories to share. Um, I might move. You want to move up here? I can put, put my Bible down. Um, is this mic okay? I'm kind of a... Okay, up here it's bad. It's better down here. Okay. Oh, I'm normally the Bermuda Triangle of all things technology, so just watch. This should be fun. Um, so uh, you can go ahead and put up the, the PowerPoint. I appreciate that. Um, just a little update on us. Um, it's fun that we get to actually be in person. Um, I've done, like pretty much most of you, a lot of Zoom, and it's it's okay, but it's not like breathing the same air and being in the same room and getting to see faces and smile. And so we're really glad to be with you guys. Um, Mia and I have been married 19 years. For those of you that don't know much about us, Mia's from Goodland, Kansas, um, and I'm from St. Francis originally. And God brought us together through the ministry of crew in the country of Spain. So right there is just enough to know that God loves a good story. And, uh, and he's writing awesome stories in this room. Um, three of them are our children. So Lily, Anya, and Dawson. I'm not going to make them stand because I don't want to uh, embarrass them any more than I'm already going to. But uh, Lily's a freshman in, in high school. Um, Anya's in seventh grade, and Dawson is in first grade. And you can put it, oh, the picture didn't quite turn out the way I wanted. But um, this is a picture uh, last Sunday evening both of the girls um, wanted to be baptized. They wanted to show their friends and family that they made a public declaration of their faith. And I tell you what, that was something that me and I have been praying since they were born. And uh, it was really something else to see them stand and even share their own testimony of what it means to follow Jesus. Um, it touched our hearts. It actually, they put it into words better than I could ever ever say it, and their friends were there, uh, both believers and non-believers, and I'm just really proud of these two girls for the steps they're taking to follow the Lord. Um, a lot of times in ministry, they kind of um, kind of get the, the back seat, and so we're really thankful. Our, there are three greatest disciples that will follow Jesus, and I hope that to be true in their lives, that you guys would follow Jesus all the days. Um, with what God has called us to vocationally, we have been called to reach college students because of how God reached out to Mia and I each in college. Um, Mia was really impacted by crew at the University of Kansas, and, and I, I was at Fort Hayes State. And so, um, yeah, it was because of that that we felt like God was calling us into ministry. I feel like I'm going to get struck by lightning right here. Um, Maybe a move. Is this better? Move a different direction? Or am I throwing you off? I'm fine. <laughs> okay. Keep moving over. Um, so, anyways, we'll just take this thing mobile. Um, <laughs> I probably just moved out of the screen so no one online can see me now. But um, so we were impacted with uh, crew, and uh, God did a work in our hearts. And we didn't know, like, when God calls you to something, He never says how long. And so, like every one of us in the room, when God says, I want you to follow me, he doesn't give you an expiration. And so we just said, Lord, we're going to follow you into crew until you call us out of it. And he keeps calling us in and in. 
And then he opens up other doors, and I'm like, are you calling us still to continue on? And, and he has. So with COVID coming at this time, also in 2019, God was actually opening up the door for me to pursue Army Reserve Chaplaincy. And I really wanted a clear direction, go this way and leave, the, leave one over the other. And God's like, both. And, oh, are you sure? <laughs> and then COVID hits, and, and so all the things I was doing traveling, um, I was able to do over Zoom. And we were able to see a lot of students walk with Jesus. Through that, Mia was uh, working with college students at uh, Fort Collins. Uh, she was impacted with um, Greek ministry. She was in a sorority. So God opened up a door for her, as many of you know, to reach out to um, the sorority The cordless mic. Okay. Is this is this on? You can hear me now? Okay, great. So anyways, Mia was reaching sorority girls at Fort Collins. And um, I want her to fill in a little bit. I don't know where we were. <laughs> I kind of lost my place, what we were talking about. <laughs> but I do have down that Mia is going to share. Um, yeah, yeah, you're, I'll do that later. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I have, okay, a couple of years ago before when COVID was just starting, my freshman that I had had in the Bible study um, that I started in the sorority graduated. So I saw them through the four years, and then they were graduating on to whatever profession God was calling them to. It was exciting to see that they were following Jesus and making him known. And they were leaving a legacy. In the sorority, the Bible study continued. And there was a girl named Skylar that took over and started leading um, the women in the sorority. And they were still sharing their faith and, and seeing people come to know the Lord um, in the sorority and beyond. And Skylar, um, I actually met her as a freshman, and she had a boyfriend that had started going to a ministry on his campus, and she was like, what is this God thing? And her big sister in the sorority actually knew Jesus and invited her to this winter conference, and that is where she encountered the Lord and surrendered her life to Jesus and started wanting to pursue him. So Skylar just graduated in May and got married to that boy that started um, inviting her and telling her about Jesus. And she, she had a ministry all throughout college with her club soccer team and in the sorority. And she definitely made mistakes, um, but always came back to the Lord. And it was a repentant heart. And um, she just fell more and more in love with Jesus left a legacy, and the Bible study continues. Well, I'm not as in touch or involved anymore. Um, they're kind of running their own thing and really involved in the ministry there um, at CSU. Well, it all came to a head this week when I was having um, lunch with a friend of mine from church, and she said, you know, the, the craziest thing happened to my son the other day at the park. Her son is in middle school, and um, he and his friends were playing basketball at the park, and they saw this group of college girls over um, in the field sitting around, and so they made a dare, which I guess middle school boys do a lot, and <laughs> my daughter probably knows, and so they're like, okay, whoever loses this game has to go over there put your headphones on and dance around those college girls pretending like you don't know they're there. You know, like, just dance real silly. <laughs> so, sure enough, you know, the guy that loses gets to go over there, and he starts dancing around these girls. Well, they notice him, of course, and they invite him over and start talking to him. And before they know it, these other boys are like, what's going on? Now he's, like, sitting in the circle with these college girls. Like, we've got to go over there and see what's up. So they go over, and the girls start talking to them. And it turns out they're talking about the Lord. They're, like, asking him questions about themselves, introducing themselves, and, and they start sharing about Jesus with them. Um, for two hours, they talked to these boys. 
and they were talking about everything my friend was saying from racism to relationships to partying to just everything under the sun. But they shared the gospel with them, and, and the boys, most of them hadn't been to church. They're um, mostly non-believers. My friend's son was the only one that had been involved and knew about Jesus, and so they were, they kept, his friends were really tracking, and they said, that makes a lot of sense, and they were really following, and of course, he, you know, they were engaged because these girls were cute, and um, so afterwards, he and his friends go to lunch, and one of his friends, who's not a believer, said, you know, maybe we should pray before lunch, and his friend was, and Michael and my friend's son was like, yeah, that's a great idea. So they pray before their meal, and Michael gets in the car to tell his mom what happened. And he's like, Mom, is there a sorority in our church? And she's like, what? He's like, all these girls we were talking to were in some sorority on campus. And um, I'm not sure if they're Gamma Phi's, but what was so cool was that the Lord used them to impact my son, my my friend's son, and all of his friends eternally because they love Jesus and they are wanting to make him known wherever they are. And so that was just such a cool, like full circle encounter with like the impact that that legacy has created of just loving the Lord. And it was so natural and organic. They're just like sitting down talking about Jesus. And they have no idea what impact they made in his life and his friends. They're still talking about it. You know, they're like, let's go see those girls again. But because of Jesus as well. So. That's so awesome. I'm so glad that you were able to share that. Um, yeah, thanks, hon. Uh, we, we say we get to be around the best and the brightest, and we mean it. I, I can't believe that God would let me be able to do this kind of job. Um, it is so humbling to be used by the Lord in ways where you can see it ripple out into eternity. And, and Mia has been so faithful with the Greek women, and uh, God has called her um, to step into, she's doing elder care right now, um, and it's just been another, it's a whole other story for another time, but it's just been faithful. It's, it's been encouraging to see how God has called her to continue to be faithful and, uh, and so in all of that, these stories we're sharing to you are just a testimony of what God is doing. I have a couple stories of myself. So I work with ROTC cadets. ROTC cadets, you know, are part-time military, full-time student. They really, they really uh, have a high character need, and they're wanting to make an impact. And they talk about words as, such as resiliency. They want to be spiritually resilient. They're gonna, they see themselves as future officers, and so what they want to do is they want to know how are they going to lead, um, because they're going to be leading um, upon graduation after six months a platoon or a, a wing of 30 to 40 enlisted people, uh, men and women, and these enlisted men and women may know more than they know. In fact, most often they know more than the second lieutenants, right, right Grady? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so they want to know how to humbly lead, how to be a faithful uh, and excellent officer, but also to bring the light of Christ. And so a lot of times what we say is we're, we're raising up future officers that will be indigenous missionaries into our military. Because as we're seeing in this last two weeks, in these moments, that's when the character is revealed. And as we've seen with um, some of the stories about the, the Marines that were killed, they were loving and serving people with excellence all around them. And, and none of us know our date or time when God would call us home. And, and a lot of these, these ROTC officers see that, and they want to walk in that balance and honor God with all their lives. And so I have two stories to share with you. The first one's um, Sophia, if that can come up. It might be the next. Okay, so... This, this, these are my cadets at Oregon State, at least two years ago. That's what they look like. Um, and Sophia was a freshman. She's over here, and she has her hair pulled back, uh, but I promise she's a girl. And she's the one girl out of these three guys. Well, Sophia, um, she decided, I'm going to be a part of this Valor thing. And, and she started going and, and started inviting other female ROTC cadets, which is very rare. In fact, 
um, mul multiple um, ROTC cadets, or a lot of ROTC cadets are male. And, and so for a female to be in that world, they are already like feeling like an outsider. But she stepped, stepped up and um, has started a female Bible study. Um, she was really quiet, really shy. She didn't even have a uniform at that point. She was just a freshman. Um, and anyways, last summer, she, we weren't able to do summer missions in the way we normally do because of COVID. So we did an online summer discipleship intensive. If you add the word intensive to anything with an ROTC cadet, you get them. Because like, oh, I'm intense. I'm there. And so we called it the Summer Discipleship Intensive. We did it with uh, three other organizations, Officer Christian Fellowship, uh, Navigators, and then Crew. And so what we did is we had 40 to 50 uh, students on a Zoom call, and we'd have a person preach or share how do you disciple somebody? How do you share your faith? How do you walk with God? How do you pray? And this was every night um, for a week. And then they would break up in these small groups. Well, Sophia, a freshman, um, she said, I want to, I want to lead one of those groups. So she led that group and God did so much in her life that then she's like, okay, when I come back to school and they opened up school and they were in person, uh, last spring, she's like, I'm going to, I'm going to take to heart this. And so she started seeking out other ROTC cadet women and having lunch. And a common thing for them to talk about is, is excellence and service. And then she wanted to bring spirituality into that. So they had spiritual conversations over lunch about the Bible and how to be an excellent leader for Christ. Um, and so it's just this amazing thing going on. Well, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. So I don't know if you've seen on Facebook, a lot of people are doing uh, how it started, like it might be the relationship. Hey, how it started, how it's going. That's what I'm trying to do with this, these pictures here. So how it's going. Um, Sophia is now recognized by her ROTC leadership as one of the rising leaders. She's a sophomore. Uh, actually going into her junior year this fall. The first cadet from her school to inv be invited to a specialty training course. Out of the history of the ROTC program, they've never had any cadet, let alone male or female, be invited to this special school uh, called Sapper School. And, uh, and she got invited um, and has had a great influence with her battalion. Um, she wants to continue to reach female ROTC cadets because she feels like God has put her there for a reason. And he is going to use her in mighty ways. Like we're, we have seen um, Air Force, Navy, uh, midshipmen, and cadets come to her and, and say, we want to be a part of this. So it's just these dynamic people that I can't believe God lets me cross paths with. Um, okay, go to the next pic picture. His name's AJ. Okay, this is AJ right here. He's a freshman in that picture. That's three years ago. Um, AJ was the only student to come to our, our retreat that we had um, yeah, three years ago in the spring from University of Washington. The retreat was 15 miles away from the University of Washington, but we had other cadets. All these other cadets pictured came from all over the state. So AJ came out of faith, knowing that he was trusting God to do something. He and another buddy, Kurt, started praying. They just would pray, and they just slowly started seeing God open up spiritual conversations and doors with their ROTC program. Um, in the midst of three years, God grew that group to about 25 that were all Air Force. They all would sit and talk about how do we talk to others about Jesus? How do you have resilience in your faith? How do you, how do you navigate the future of being a, uh, an officer in the Air Force? And, and so go ahead in the next picture. Uh, this is him now. He graduated during COVID, so no graduation ceremony. Um, he is, uh, uh, he's waiting to be commissioned. He doesn't know because uh, in the midst of this year, he hurt his back. And so um, he is facing a different type of resiliency right now. Um, he thought the future, like many of us, we have a plan. And we think this is the way God wants us to go. But something comes in in the midst of that and doesn't change God's plan, but it changes our timing. And so one of the things happened, he hurt his back, and he's not able to complete his last PT test to commission it into the Air Force. So he'll find out in September if he gets the commission. But when I talk to him, he's, he's now married, he's walking with Jesus, he is a part of a local church, and, and he said these things. He's like, you know what? I don't care where I go or what I do. I know that God controls my future. 
in that if I go into the Air Force, I will serve God. And if I don't go into the Air Force because of my back, I will serve God. And just his resolve, his resolve and commitment to the Lord was so encouraging because I can only imagine these young people who have been groomed to be officers, they want to be pilots or they want to, they want to fly helicopters or they want to lead people and, and that hangs in the balance. And that's all they've known for four years. And now they're on the precipice of the real steps of faith. Where is God going to take them? Um, I want to show you one more picture. This is, this is me and Chaplain McCall. I met him eight years ago when I first started doing some things with Valor. And the only reason I took this picture is because, of, oh, my word, he was on staff with crew. How funny is that that then God called him into the Army? That's crazy. Who would ever do that? And, and as I was speaking to him, he's like, I was like, why did you do this? And, and that conversation has stuck in my mind so much in these last two years. Because two years ago, 2019 in August, I had a conversation with a couple chaplains. And I was like, oh, man, you guys do great work. Chaplains, you bring God to soldiers and soldiers to God. And I would love to do that. Just too bad I'm so old. And they're like, oh, you know what? They, they just raised the age waiver. You could probably get in. I'm like, yeah, I don't know if that's where the Lord wants me. You know, and I, I played it off. Well, the Lord wouldn't let that go. And I just had turned 40. And that year, I kind of made a, I made a commitment to the Lord that if he brought something up, then during that year, I wasn't going to procrastinate on it. I'd just see it through. And then if he shut the door, that's great. So I called a recruiter. And, they're, and obviously, we all know what Army recruiters are like, so they will never turn you down. I was like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, Lord, I'll put in the application. And the application took nine months. And I was like, this isn't going to happen. Lord, but I, I feel like you're leading in this. And Mia and I are talking. I thought, well, she'll shoot it down. <laughs> oh, I think you should do that. Oh, okay. All right. So then I start going down this road. And long story short, it has been two years of following the Lord, one thing at a time. I mean, I had to, I don't know if anybody in this room has served. I, I, know, I know Grady and I were talking about, so I know Grady's gone through this, but there's a thing, there's a, there's a physical you have to go through to get into the military called MEPS, and it was in Denver. But when you turn 40, it's like they check every part of you and everything, and you're, you're like a specimen. And, and I thought, Lord, I'm not going to make it through this. I'm 40. Like, there's a lot of things wrong. I hurt in places. This is not going to happen. And they passed me after losing my paperwork three times, right? That, that's kind of the way the military does it. So, so that's where I'm at. And so I want to show you this next picture. How it's going is um, these are two friends that are chaplains in the Army. Um, God has, has led me to um, uh, commission into the Army Reserves. I'm a second lieutenant, a chaplain candidate. I'm going to a uh, seminary at Denver Seminary, learning and getting an MDiv in ministry. It's something else I said I would never do. Like, every time I've told God I never would do something, that's what happens. So, and that's where, where I'm at right now. God wants to continue to use me um, with Valor. I've been granted this little niche where I get to continue my day job with Valor, um, but I also get to serve in the military. And I don't know what that's going to look like. In fact, I've been waiting for three months to be assigned to a unit. Um, so I don't know what that looks like. But my goal is not to be a career military person. My goal is to just be a light wherever God opens up the doors. So if it's, for, <laughs> if it's for a year or if it's for 20 years, we'll see what the Lord does with that. Um, but I, I wanted to share with you guys that because so many times in our prayer letters, through emails, things you see on Facebook, it sounds confusing. And I'm still pretty confused by the, the path that God's asking us to go on. Um, but I do know one thing that his word has really been my comfort. And I want to share with you a passage that God has brought up to me. And in fact, if you get our emails, or if you'd like to get our emails or our prayer letters, um, seek out me or I. We'll get you added on to that. Um, because there's a lot of things changing. Um, and we just want to be in contact with you. And feel free to ask us any question as, you, as it's clear or unclear. But um, in our most recent prayer letter, I write about sitting with a group of eight juniors in college that just went through their basic training. Their, it's basic training light for officers um, at, at um, Fort Knox. 
And we're talking about who can be a minister. And they thought, oh, yeah, yeah, it's the chaplains or it's the pastor. I was like, well, let's just see what Paul says. And so I want to read to you guys from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 16 through 21. So follow along with me. And I'll be reading out of the English Standard Version. So. And Paul says, From now on, therefore, we, we regard no one, no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh. We regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. The old, the new has come. And all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would bless the hearing and the reading of your word. Would your spirit speak into our lives through these, these observations? And um, I pray, God, that you would speak um, into each heart and each mind here today. In your name, amen. Well, I see three, op- three observations that come out to me in this passage. Um, is that we are new. We have a new identity in Christ. We've been reconciled to God. And we are ambassadors. We are new in Christ. He says that in um, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. The old, the new has come. I think a lot of times with this season of COVID and whatever we want to call it, these last two years, it's been really easy to focus on trying to restore or trying to reboot or new normal, and those kind of things. But I like this phrasing because it reminds me that with God, my past and all this brokenness and my sin and the things I have failed in, he doesn't try to clean that up or make it rebooted to 2.0. He is making it new, that we are new people in Christ, that every one of us that comes to him, we literally die to that old way of life And he puts in us a new life that we get to live out every day as we follow God. The next point that he talks about, and it's a big church word, is reconciled. We've been reconciled to God. And I don't know what goes through your mind when you think of the word reconciled. I think of like it's like reconciling my checkbook to what's really right. (laughs) Oh, I thought I had more money in there than I actually have. It's good to know what's right. It's good to know that I, I don't have $200 to spend on this bike part or on this car repair or whatever. That's, that's what's reconciling. It's taking what was wrong and making that correct. In fact, Webster's defines it to restore to friendship or harmony, reconcile the factions. Another definition is to settle, resolve, or reconcile the differences. So Paul's using this word as he's talking about our relationship with Christ just after he said we're new. And he says, all this is from God who, through Christ, reconciled us to himself, made us right to him. We were made right with God and gave us this ministry of reconciliation. That's that's what I don't understand about God. Hey, I just made you right. We're good. Now come with me and let's go tell other people. I, I don't understand how he can entrust us into his business with imperfect people. I don't get it right all the time, God. That's right. You're clean. You're new. You, I made it right. Let's go. Okay, but I'm not going to get it right. I know. You're not. But I'm going to keep working in your life. And he works through us. He says this, that in 19... That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. 
we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that we in him, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I have never met an ambassador of a country. Um, I, I've, I've met a lot of people, though, that are very excited about a brand, a salesperson that wants to sell me on something, you know? And they can, they can make anything look good, you know? Car salesmen, I like cars. I could be talked into anything. Um, but an ambassador is different because an ambassador holds in the balance what misconceptions the people have of the country or leader they're representing. And I think a lot of people, and especially as we do ministry with college students, they have misconceptions of God. There has been a church. There has been a Christian. There has been, they just term it religion that has hurt them. And that is their first take with God. And so it's, it's a lot like going to a salesman. Oh, they had me as an agenda. But an ambassador is different. And he's, an ambassador comes and says, well, what do you think of my leader? What do you think of God? Oh, you know what? I don't think you're right on with that. Would you like to hear how I know this God? And, and that's what Paul is saying here is like, you're serving a God that you thought you had to clean yourself up for. You thought you had, to, you had to live this perfect life. But look at what your God has done. He's made you new. He's reconciled. He's made you right in Christ. And he's now given you purpose to go out and do what he just did in your life. A lot of times, students have the misconception of God that it's all about right and wrong, if I do more good than bad. But a lot of times, they're convinced that they will get through college and then clean themselves up. And a lot of us know the verse, Romans 5, 8. Um, but that is one of the, my favorite verses to talk to college students about because it says this, God demonstrates his own love toward us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That God didn't wait for us to not be sinners anymore. He knew as his in, we were his enemies, the Bible says, when we were in sin, that he was going to come and die, send his son to die for us because he loved us, his enemies, so much. I love that. I love that picture. Um, so... An application on this today, I want to ask you, who's called into this ministry? Is Paul talking about now that you're a pastor or now that you've gone through seminary or now that you have this paid position? I asked these cadets that same question, and they were stumped. And I said, do you think God would want to use you to reach the other people in your, in your advanced camp training during this week? Oh, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Do you think God would want to use you to reach the people in your battalion back in college? Yeah. Do you think God would want to use you being a leader in our military, going forward to speak to men and women that are looking to you to lead them? Yeah, I think so. And do you have a title as a pastor or a chaplain? No. And does it say you need it? No. And they saw themselves as mobilized people God wanted to use to bring his kingdom into those worlds. And so I ask you guys today, and myself, how is God wanting to use us to be ministers of his reconciliation to Goodland, to Northwest Kansas, to Colorado, to the United States, to wherever else he puts us? How are we going to follow him into that? Yesterday, as I was driving here, Mia was driving. I wasn't texting and driving. I texted AJ, and uh, um, I just said, AJ, can you, in like one text message, put into words what you learned with Valor? And I wasn't expecting to share this, but then he wrote back, and I was like, wow, that, I have to share that. AJ um, has led so humbly with his Valor group. He's always put Christ first. And, and the military was a long third or fourth in his priorities. And so AJ says, thinking back on his time in Valor, and he quotes, oh, man, where to begin? I think the biggest lesson I learned is that God uses people who may not be the coolest or most talented in ministry or the smartest, 
but that God can do mighty things for his glory. With a simple yes to his calling, our whole movement began with just saying yes to what we felt God was calling us to do. And I never could imagine all the things the Lord did through that decision and the lives that were impacted for the gospel to say yes and obey what we knew all the time. So today, what's something God is stirring in your heart? What is there something about this message that God is saying? I'm, I'm giving you a choice. Do you want to say yes to this? What's he asking you to do? Maybe for the first time you just heard today that, and you understood that what Christ has done for you. And how are you going to respond to him? A lot of times, our misconceptions are, oh, I don't want to get up front and make a decision. And that's not, that, those choices are between you and God. A lot of times, it's the simple yes in your heart of saying, God, something in that I heard today that you died for my sins. Okay, I'm willing to believe that. We talk about how faith is a, is a, um, is a progression. Everybody's on a, a scale from zero being an atheist to 10 being a Christ follower. And it's not just one to 10 every day or any decision. I think a lot of people are wanting to just move closer and closer on that progression. And it's a lot of little yeses. Okay, I'm going to trust that Christian. I'm going to, maybe I'm going to come, maybe I'm going to tune in on Facebook or whatever. I'm gonna, Someone's talked to me about it, I'm going to do that. And it's one step closer and one step closer. And then finally, there's just the choice. God is, God is offering a life for people to know him. And so with that, you do not have to clean yourself up to come to God. But you can respond to what you've heard by saying, yeah, I know I'm a sinner. In fact, yeah, if, if people knew about me, what God knows about me, they probably wouldn't want me here. And I would say, if you knew what God knows about me, you probably wouldn't want me here either. Because the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But this verse, the Bible, Jesus' life says he has made it right. We can come to him and surrender our lives and become God's child. And so if that's you, you can just say a, a quick prayer in your heart. And it just says, you know, Lord Jesus, because of your love, you have paid for my sins. I surrender my life to you. I want to follow you. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. Let me pray. Lord, I'm a life that was reconciled. I was legalistic, and I had my own plan, and I judged others. And Lord, you entered my life in college. And I've never been the same. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for making me a new creation. Thank you for my brothers and sisters here and online for what you're doing in our lives. Lord, we respond to your Holy Spirit and what you want to make of us, how you want to use us. May you bring revival to Goodland, to Northwest Kansas, to our country out of people responding to what you have done, Lord Jesus. God, we thank you for this moment to be together. We thank you for this church, for the lives you're impacting and how you love us, God. Help us shine your love to those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Prior. Good. Well, thank you, Christian, yeah. for sharing your stories and uh, bringing God's word. That was awesome. Uh, something that I uh, glean as I listened to Christian is in that passage. It says, uh, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. And then... A couple of verses later, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. So I see a link, you know, with the Christian life. 
sometimes we think, oh, whew, okay, I've trusted in Jesus as my Lord and Savior, so then we go on with life. But there's a other aspect of the equation. Yes, we've trusted Christ as our Savior, but we're also His ambassador. His ambassador. So hopefully this week, I guess our challenge for each one of us is, here's the challenge. I'm an ambassador. Can I help somebody this week take another step closer on that scale of 1 to 10 in trusting in Jesus Christ and being a follower? You know, they're gonna, you're going to encounter somebody. So our challenge is to be that ambassador who brings them that one step closer. Thank you, Christian. Good job. Well, I have the privilege of leading us in prayer, and of course, we begin by praises, and so let's do that together as a church body. How can we encourage one another? What is